They do not want you to think too much. It's all things considered from Minnesota Public Radio News. I'm Tom Cran. Two of Minnesota's three nuclear reactors were shut down today for unscheduled repairs. XL Energy shut down Unit 1 at Prairie Island Nuclear Generating Plant after exhaust leaks were discovered in both of its emergency diesel generators. And the reactor in Monticello was shut down so workers could fix a leak within its containment structure. The second Prairie Island reactor is unaffected. XL Energy says no radioactive material escaped from either plant and there was no danger to the public or plant workers. Joining us now is Terry Pickens, XL Energy's Director of Nuclear Regulatory Policy. And good afternoon. Good to speak with you. Hi, Tom. So first, uh, are you confident, have the test been done, that no radioactive material has escaped here and there was no danger to either workers or anyone who lives by either of these plants? Yes, we're confident that uh, we made conservative decisions to shut down the plants, and it was well before there was anything that might have resulted in any radioactive release. So let's take them one by one. Unit 1 at Prairie Island, what made you shut that plant down? When did you decide and discover uh, that you needed to do this? Uh, Well, on our nuclear reactors, we periodically are required to do tests on our safety systems. So as part of our monthly surveillance on one of our emergency diesel generators, we discovered that there was a minor fuel oil leak in the vicinity of the exhaust piping. As a result of that, uh, we declared that unit inoperable. Well, when we do that, we have to check and make sure that the other emergency diesel generator is in fact available if it's needed. So we went to test that one. We discovered a similar circumstance. Since we didn't have either one of our emergency diesel generators available, we decided that conservatively we would shut the plant down, go in and get those fixed before we returned the plant back to to produce power. And then a leak at Monticello. Tell us about the extent of the leak and what you discovered. Um, Inside of our containment. Of course, we have our reactor operating, and there's water, coolant, circulating through that at all times. Um, You have components inside on that piping system, like valves and piping, and they're connected together with gaskets and valve packing, and you're always getting a little bit of the water leaking by some of the packing or the gaskets, and we monitor how much leakage we have inside, and it's collected inside of that uh, structure and we monitor how fast it's collecting. The NRC has told us if it gets more than this, you have to shut down. Well, we discovered quite a bit lower amount than that at Monticello, and we decided we're not going to let it get any worse. So well before it was a problem, we decided to shut the unit down, go in, and fix that leak. Can you recall the last time that two of uh, the three Minnesota nuclear reactors were taken offline like this? Um thinking about it right now. I don't recall when the last time was, no. But it's a fairly it's a rare extraordinary, occurrence. rare occurrence, yeah. Uh, when do you think these uh, plants will be back online? Um, we don't give out precise dates. You know, we are looking at how long it's going to take us to affect the repairs, and it will probably be on the order of several days. These two events today, one at uh, Prairie Island and, and one at Monticello, are unrelated to each other, uh, but just hit on the same day? That's correct. Just coincidental that they occurred at the same time. But in general, what sorts of plans do you have so that, uh, obviously this is not something you'd want to happen, but do you have plans to to try to make sure it doesn't happen again in place? Um, When something like this occurs at a nuclear power plant, one of the things that we do is you take, you look at what happened, you study the root cause of what it is, and you put Uh, lessons learned in place so that you can prevent this type of thing from occurring again. All right. Thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Tom. Tonight, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is calling the situation at Palisades, quoting here, serious. The South Haven plant is shut down again as they try to fix a leak in the reactor's primary cooling system. 24 Hour News 8's Henry Herbs live in studio with what he's learning tonight. Henry? Well, Brian, they've known there was a growing cooling water leak since they put the nuke back into operation last month after an outage to fix a different problem, a leaking coolant tank. 
They repeatedly sent crews into the containment structure since late July to try to find the leak, at times even using cameras on long poles, but it stayed hidden. So yesterday, they shut the plant down, looked again, and found steam escaping from the mechanism that controls one of the 45 rods they lower into the reactor to control the power level. Since the leak is in a part that is under significant pressure, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has a zero tolerance standard for leaks, so they have to fix it before they can restart the plant. Before they discovered where the leak is, they were operating under a different federal standard that allows a gallon a minute cooling water leak. This leak was about a third of that, according to the NRC and the company. Both say the cooling water leaked into the bottom of the containment and was pumped back into the closed cooling system, so no radioactive material got outside the containment. Still, the NRC sent another inspector to Palisades today to join the two resident inspectors because it considers it a serious condition. Palisades is already under tighter scrutiny because of a poor safety record. A company spokesman says they will replace the part and examine it to find out exactly what leaked and why. In Maryland, Constellation Energy Nuclear Group says it has shut down one of two nuclear reactors at Calvert Cliffs plant in southern Maryland after a malfunction caused a drop in power generation. A spokesman said Monday that a control rod unexpectedly dropped into the reactor core. Control rods are used to regulate the pace of the nuclear reaction. The NRC spokesman said such events are infrequent but do not pose a risk to the public, yada yada yada. And they can't say when that one's going to be back online either. Unit 2, however, is running at full power there in Maryland. As you may have heard, in Pennsylvania, the local government is handing out potassium iodide pills to people who live near nuclear power plants in Pennsylvania. Free potassium iodide tablets. Now why are they doing that? They're being kind of vague as to why they're handing these out, stating that they are only to be used in case of a nuclear emergency. For what it's worth, I was able to find that they did the same thing exactly one year ago at the same time of year. August 10th, 2011, they distributed potassium iodide tablets then too. That's your nuclear roundup. Thanks for watching. Yeah.